Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings viewers in the name of Jesus. Welcome you once again to our devotion. My name is Wisdom Mesa Pili. Let us have a word of prayer before we start. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of life. As we start our devotion, may the Holy Spirit of the Christ teacher be with us, teach us the things that we do not know. When all has been said and done, when you come to take your children's home, it is our prayer that we may be found in that number. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our subject of consideration shall come from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4, verses from verse 35 up to verse 41. Of course, maybe it's a well-known passage. It is my prayer that at this point in time, it might bring a new meaning to your life. The story well known as the coming of the storm, most of the tempest is raging. I'll read from verse 35. Mark 4, verse 35. On the same day when the evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. Then verse 37 says, And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. Then verse 38, But when but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do not care that you are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you do not have faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Verse 35 says, Jesus said, Let us cross over. Then I have a question, I have a bit of concern. Jesus says, let us cross over to the other side. Then when they're now crossing over, or when they're now cruising over to the other side, we're told a great windstorm arose in the sea. My question is, how can Jesus command us to cross over? How can Jesus initiate a journey while least he knows that on the, along the way, there's going to be a great windstorm? Then he says, let us cross over. Sometimes, children of God, it might be impossible to understand the, way, the ways of God. He says even in the, in, in the book of Jeremiah, his ways are not my, he, my ways are not your ways. He said, let us cross over. Probably the disciples and everyone who was in that boat, they were expecting just a nice cruise, everything fine, because they were walking with Jesus. As they were still going, the, wind, the great windstorm arises. Before we get there, verse 36 says, there were also little boats in the ship, in the sea, sorry. There were also other little boats in the sea. Then when you go down, that is the only, the first and the last verse whereby Mark decides to mention uh, about little boats. When the storm is now rising, when the, now, the storm was now being tempestuous, Mark did not mention about those little boats. He could not waste his time talking about other little boats because Jesus was not in those boats. So he had to focus. He could not waste ink, waste everything, waste stationery and everything talking about other boats which were in the sea where Jesus was not in those boats. So his focus was diverted to that boat where there was Jesus because Jesus was the master of the sea and the master of everything else. I'm trying to say, when we're in this life, when you see your life is just flowing, no challenge, nothing, everything is just flowing, you can be, you know, you wonder, am I still living? Am I still doing it in life? Check your life. There might be a problem because uh, when you are really in a great controversy, as, uh, as, we, as we all know that we're in a great controversy against the evil, when we're indeed in that great controversy, somewhere, somehow, we have to cry. Somewhere, somehow, we have, we have to encounter loss. Somewhere, somehow, we have to encounter disappointments in order to prove to the devil that we're not his friend, in order to prove that we're indeed at home. There's no way we can be happy at home. There's no way we can be smiling while 
Oh, then I have a problem because as children of God, why least we know that we are in a warm. People seem to be so relaxed. People seem to be enjoy- one, one not serious. We are fighting a full-time devil. Hence, we are fighting him part-time. But the devil that you are fighting against is always on home. So Mark does not talk about other little boys because there was no Jesus. So don't complain, child of God. When temptations come your way, be happy, be thankful that you are indeed walking with God. Then uh, verse 39 says, uh, they, 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 then they, decide, they, they remember that they have Jesus in the boat. They went to the boat and said, Master, you are sleeping, carest not that you are perishing. Then the Bible says, Jesus rose and commanded the wind to be still. My Bible says, and the wind ceased, and there was great calm. Imagine Jesus is uh, in the stand sleeping, and uh, I would like to believe that something which was making more noise to Jesus were the disciples more than the noise of the waves of the sea. But when Jesus wakes up, he commands the sea. Then the very same sea keeps quiet at once because Jesus had commanded. When you want to believe this, uh, I have been asked, wondering why did the sea or why did um, the waters obey Jesus at once? Because the same voice which was saying, peace be still. When you go back to the book of Genesis, Genesis, 1 verse, Genesis chapter 1 verse 9, during the creation week, the same voice which was saying, peace be still, it was the very same voice which said, let there be sea. So there is no way whereby the sea was not going to be able to listen to their master's voice. So Jesus commands the sea to be quiet, and the sea had no other option but to listen to that one. Brethren, imagine a sea which was not even created in the image of God. When Jesus speaks, the sea was able, or the sea is able to re- to. to to listen to the master's voice. Then human beings who have been created in the image of God, according to Genesis 1 verse 26, can't, they fail so many times to listen to the voice of God. The sea obeys the master's voice. Then simply means, it more is, more is, 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 is expected from us because we've been created in his image. The sea obeyed, then we should be in a better position to obey God, despite of the challenges, despite of everything that we encounter, we should just be able to take God at his word, be it everything is good or things are not okay. Let us learn this lesson from the sin. When Jesus commanded the sea to be quiet, the sin was just but quiet. Then the disciples were amazed. They were still not sure on who Jesus was. They were still not sure about his identity. But the most painful part, when you go to the following chapter, uh, the, the, the story of Legion, when Legion saw Jesus, he said to, the, to Jesus, Jesus, son of man, do you not trouble us? Imagine that demons were able to recognize Jesus. But the disciples who were made in the form of God, in the form of Jesus, could not really understand who Jesus was. My message for today is simple. We shouldn't complain. We shouldn't be complaining when we're into trials and temptations. We should stop complaining and start praying. Stop complaining and start praying. Do you know as we live along, there are some of the problems that we encounter in life that are known by our friends only. Our friends always have that latest update before you even update Jesus. When something happens or you're fired at work or you've been divorced by your spouse or something, uh, People usually update their friends first before updating Jesus. There are some things which we shame to our friends, our families, our, 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 our wives, our husbands before updating Jesus. Before we complain, update Jesus, stop complaining and start praying. Then the first verse said, let us cross over. Uh, we shouldn't believe this lie. There is a lie which has been spoken by the devil to the children of God, that uh, when you are following God, everything must be flowing, no problem, no tears, no what, no. That is not in my Bible. Actually, the one verse I know in my Bible, in John 15, 33, says, in the world, you shall not have peace, but be of good cheer. I have come, I have overcome the world. Jesus says us, 
tells us that in the world we shall not have peace. But the devil is coming saying, when you, have, when you see yourself having trials and temptations, Jesus has forsaken you. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. Uh, the way Jesus leads, as I've said, his ways are not our ways. Jesus can lead us through the tempestuous sin. Jesus can lead us through the valleys. Jesus can lead us in, in, in a very fine highway. Jesus can lead us wherever and however. All we have to do is to follow for, for sure he knows the way through the wilderness. What we have to do is to make sure that everything that we do, we update Jesus. Imagine the, the disciples go to read. They threw their goods into the sea. They, threw, they tried all they could do, forgetting that Jesus was also with them in the sea. When they failed, when they tried everything else, they then, get, goes on to, they then go on to say, Oh, by the way, we have this man down here. Let us go and ask. Imagine after wasting so, so many things. I believe some of them could have even, they, they were, they've already lost their jewels or something, whatever thing they were carrying. Then when they've done all that they could do, they remember that they had Jesus in the ship, brethren. Come what, what, come what may, let us then not forget that we have Jesus and they were sailing with him. He is with us in this ship. A story is told that there was a bus which was going to another rural area. The highway is said it, took, it was not nice. There were a lot of potholes. The road was dust. As if it's not enough, even the bus itself was old. The passengers had to do, even if it was raining, uh, the, sto the storyteller says, tells us that water would enter into the bus. Imagine you are in a bus and you have to use an umbrella. Such was the condition or such was the atmosphere in that bus. The road was not nice, dusty and pothole. Even the bus itself was also very, very old. Everyone in this bus, all the passengers, they were so troubled, confused, and so disturbed. Then while the chain was still continuing, there was this other little boy who was just seated there, very, very relaxed. This other woman says, young man, how come we seem to be so relaxed while at least we are struggling to save our lives. You seem to be so relaxed. You are not worried about anything. Then the young man smiles and asks this question. Who is the driver of this bus? Then they told him, no, no, the, the bus driver is Mr. So and so. And that same bus driver was his father. Then the, the, the young man says, there is no way I can be worried. As long as the bus driver is still my father, I know he is having it all under control. Despite of the old Portal Road, I know he is having it all under control. Children of God, this is the mentality we should possess. Every time as we sail along, as we toil along, waiting for the second appearing of the Master, we should have that attitude, that come what may, I am not worried, I am not afraid of anything, for I know the one who holds the universe. Whatever temptations, trials, challenges, you know, all those kind of challenges, whatever that could be coming your way, fear not. We have Jesus in the, in the, in the boat and we are sailing home with him and he is the captain. The ship so many times may appear as if it's about to sink, but I'd like to tell you this hour, fear not, fear not, he is having it all under control. He will do it again. So many times in the Bible, we're told about our stories, our parables, or situations where Jesus stepped in when there was no hope. Imagine Lazarus was raised from the dead, four, wait, four days dead, but he was raised up. What more about your situation? You are still alive, and you. So Jesus is definitely going to do it all. If you manage to calm the waves of the sea, you will also calm the waves in your lives. I want to pray with someone. Uh, I understand wherever we are, when we are viewing this channel, we are facing a lot of different things. But my prayer is fear not. We still have him and he still has it all under control. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the weight of assurance that you're still with us in the pot. 
So many times, Heavenly Father, we tend to lose it. We tend to lose hope. We complain instead of praying. Teach us, Father, to have you and take you at your word. Teach us, Father, to understand that all the waves that might be coming in our lives, we have to stay in the boat, for you are also with us in the boat. It is our prayer, Heavenly Father, that everyone who might be listening, having different kind of challenges, calm the storms in their lives. We pray this in your holy name, having faith that you will do it again as you did to our fathers back in the days. It is our prayer in your holy name. Amen.